We are launching in this project in August because it is August month. We want to empower women during this month of women in South Africa. The preparation started in 2012. They started on calls, consultations. We have to consult all stakeholders, including some organizations, NGOs who are already doing this Mom Connect on a very small scale with a few patients. They have to be brought together under one roof and we discuss the matter with them. Then we had to consult our development partners. Then we had to consult even provinces, uh, uh, people who are dealing with maternal and child health, who are dealing with primary health care, etc., etc. And uh, over the past three weeks, I visited each and every province where I was addressing meeting of people who have got something to do with pregnancy, childbirth uh, in all the provinces, the nurses, the doctors, the community health workers, etc. I've just finished that two days ago, and today we are launching. Now that was the launch of the Mom Connect project in Social and Groove, Pretoria on the 31st of August in the year of the Lord 2014. Good morning and a very warm welcome to Politas House Call here on SABC2. I'm Dr. Victor Ramatisi. And welcome, Chief Director of the Maternal and Women's Health in the National Department of Health, Dr. Paul Holland. Dr. Paul, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Morning and thank you. I was just saying to somebody, hey, but was social government about to take a macata and a man, I mean, to, 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 to the launch at the KT Mutumasi Clinic. I mean, clearly, it was a very big occasion, which we had the pleasure of attending as uh, the team from Politas House Court. Now, this is the Mom Connect project. How do you want to define this in a few sentences? Well, actually, the, the project is aimed at, you know, reaching mothers and children and improving their health outcomes, ultimately. In essence, having a healthy mom going through a healthy pregnancy, delivering a healthy baby who goes through a healthy childhood in order to uh, meet the Millennium Development Goals uh, set for 2015 and also beyond the 2015. And that's the essence of it, to try and improve health outcomes of mothers and children. Now that we have the opportunity, you know, you and I can speak about MDGs or Millennium Development Goals, you know, because it's something that we deal with on a daily basis. But for the sake of the viewer out there, how, how do you want to define Millennium Development Goals and which specific goals are applicable to the Mom Connect project? Well, M Millennium Development Goal 4 is applicable to children mm -hmm. and uh, trying to reduce uh, child mortality, that is child deaths. Uh, by 2015, that was the, the date that was agreed upon, um, and uh, reducing those child deaths by two-thirds. 
uh, Millennium Development Goal 5 deals with maternal, um, uh, reducing maternal mortality, which is maternal deaths, and reducing that by 75%, and the target set, that was the target set for 2050. Look, we'll get to here a little bit later uh, when the minister pronounces mm -hmm. around the importance of the MDGs and exactly what impact this mom corner project is expected to have on the MDGs and mm -hmm. how various countries, including South Africa, are performing in meeting those goals because we know that this is a united-driven initiative where all signatories to the United Nations said plans that they would achieve certain goals. Some of them are health goals, some of them are developmental and everything else, and how we are going to do in so far as that particular area is concerned. Now, this thing is cell phone driven. Now, why cell phone? Because most people in South Africa, most pregnant women, mm -hmm. have access to a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, it's, it, it's one way that we can reach most pregnant women by sending them messages through cell phones, which is one thing that, one medium that is quite accessible. Now, simply put, you are saying you are going to encourage every pregnant woman in South Africa to register themselves to this project. Yes. And we'll talk a little bit later about how they are going to register. But you are now going to, once they are registered, they are within the system. Yes. And you are now going to use cell phone messages, mainly SMSs, to communicate with them yes. during the pregnancy and a year after they've, they've given birth. Yes. Now, how, how, is, how is this going to work exactly? What are the targeted and what messages you'll be communicating with them? Well, there will be pregnancy-related messages that, you know, once a woman registers, part of the information that they provide would be what stage of pregnancy they're already in when they get registered, at, at what the they're already at, at the point of registration. And therefore, uh, ensuing messages would therefore, you know, be uh, responsive to the stage of pregnancy that, that the woman is at and therefore the messages will be relevant to the various stages of pregnancy, also during um, labor, childbirth, and a year after delivery, you know, and, and the year, the one year will also have, will, will, will include messages, reminders for the baby in the first year, such as immunizations. There will be messages that are encouraging moms to breastfeed, uh, and during pregnancy there'll be reminders for mom to attend the clinic regularly to remember the dates when to go back for their next visits and also to raise awareness on some pregnancy related complications that could be minimized or avoided you know messages that say ensure that your blood pressure is being checked and ensure that your sugar levels have been checked when you go to the clinic ensure that your hiv status has been checked so that you can be uh, put on antiretroviral treatment if you you know um, need to be on antiretroviral treatment so messages that are meant to ensure that moms um, are also just aware and taking control and be informed at every stage of their pregnancy and ensure that the outcome is positive for both mom and baby. And I, I'm thinking here and, and, and I'm wondering, are, are these going to be general or generic messages or are they, are they going to be individualized to a particular patient? Because I would imagine that when a patient registers, they will say maybe um, I've had three cesarean sections or whatever, and I'm now pregnant with the fourth one. And we know the complications that are associated with that number of cesarean sections. Mm. Now, for that kind of patient, I, I would suspect that the management during the antenatal period or before they give birth is a little bit more specific. Yes. Now, are you going to be sending messages that are specific to that particular individual or general messages? Well, they, they would tend to be more general, but they, they will also there's also an opportunity for moms to actually send an SMS asking questions so if they have particular questions, you know, and particular concerns, they also, you know, call the number and they get to a helpline. And then, then their specific concerns would be addressed. I see. But otherwise it would be difficult to address every specific uh, 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 concern of every mom that, that is connected. But you send me messages because you know that during certain stages of pregnancy, there are certain things that are common to most women who are pregnant right. at that. And so you're targeting the general population at that stage of pregnancy and what the concerns may be, what the needs may be, and what needs to be you know, uh, uh, expected during that time. But, but moms are also encouraged when they have additional questions to actually call in and they will get the, the necessary answers. And also though, 
some messages to be saying, if you do have concerns or you don't understand, go back to the clinic and speak I to your see. doctor so about So the clinic is still central things. to this Yes, project. absolutely. Okay, absolutely. we'll come back to exactly how this is come about. But before we get ahead of ourselves, now the key stakeholder and the owners of this concept are obviously the pregnant women themselves. Now let us see exactly what Mom Connect concept is all about and how it is implemented. Let's watch. Having a healthy baby is a joy. Where can I get info about my pregnancy and baby? The Department of Health will send you important information. How do I do this? You must go to your nearest clinic. If you are pregnant, the nurse will register you for the Mom Connect program. Once you've signed up, you'll get important information straight to your cell phone. You'll get useful information during your pregnancy and after your child is born. This will help to keep you and your baby healthy. You'll be able to ask questions, you'll be able to complain about, or complement the service you receive at the clinic. If you're pregnant, don't wait. Go to your clinic and join Mom Connect today. Star 134 star 550 hash. It's free. Mom Connect. Wow. Now, it is free. Now, that, that, that means if, 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 if somebody, a lady, a mother, an expectant mother has registered with this, and uh, they, they can SMS back, even if they don't have a time on their phone. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. Do you think it's free? It is free. Can they still make a voice call to whoever, ask a question or seek clarity on something? Or for that purpose, you want them to go back to the clinic where they're registered? It, it's best to go back to the clinic, but they can still use the SMS facility yeah. for to, to get some degree of, or, or some of their questions answered. So when they register for the first time, they have to go to the nearest clinic? Not necessarily. Oh, there are okay. various ways of getting registered on the system. Mm. Well, you know, if they go to the clinic, then they get registered at the clinic, and the clinic code is also entered in. But uh, we've got also community health workers who are out in, in the community who've also been trained. And these community health workers are also able to register moms uh, on, 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 on Mom Connect. But also mom, a pregnant mom has access to the same line and they can register themselves on, 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 on Mom Connect to get the messages. So, you know, this is meant to be accessible to most women. Um, and it, it, be, it should be able to reach most women in, in most places and not necessarily only at the clinic. But we do encourage all pregnant moms to do go to the clinic and they need to really go and get um, So you're not taking the, the importance and the essential services away from the clinic. The clinic still is a central point, is still the service provider and communication between yes. the individual and the healthcare system as a whole. These SMSs and this communication is just there to enhance, to remind, to remind them to go for checkup or to do certain things that they are supposed to do, to give them information on the health promotion, give them education, wherever that is necessary. So it is not replacing the clinic. Yeah. But it, and how is it done? Is it a call center somewhere? Who's sending all of these messages uh, to the pregnant individual? Well, you know, there, uh, there are lots of partners that are involved mm. uh, in this, uh, along with the National Department of Health. So we have a help desk at the National Department of Health. But I we see. also have, you know, cell phone companies that are part of this and that have uh, are, are, are part of the project okay. itself. Uh, in, in supporting this. So the messages are generated from the help desk somewhere. They go in at regular intervals. They know a particular woman is at this stage of her pregnancy, and at this stage of the pregnancy, they need to be reminded to go for checkup. They need to be reminded to do a particular test. They need to be reminded to do this. They need to be reminded to check on their diet and so on and so forth. Yeah, the system is designed, yes, mm. to be responsive in that way. Gee. Too good to be true. We'll continue our discussion on Mom Connect Project with the Chief Director for Maternal and Women's Health in the National Department of Health, Dr. Pem Halele. Well, well, there are two benefits that will come from the Mom Connect project. The first one is we'll be able to send to these pregnant women who have registered 
messages that are appropriate to the level of their pregnancy. We'll be saying you are so many weeks or so many months pregnant, this is what you must do, this is what you mustn't do, this is what you must expect, this is what you must watch for, this is what you must avoid. Even after the birth of the baby, we'll still be sending messages about how to take care of a newborn. Things like breastfeeding, immunization, and many other problems which mothers experience, especially new mothers, about newborns which they never knew about. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the mothers themselves, at no cost to themselves, will be able to send us messages. They will be able to press please call me or send a message. Either a message or com of compliment or of complaint. That look, I went to one of your healthcare facilities. This is how I was treated and I'm not happy about it. Or to say I went to one of your health facilities, it was a very nice, brilliant experience. Please congratulate that clinic or that health worker. So, so it is two ways, us communicating with them and they being able to communicate with us so that it will help us to improve or the, 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 the healthcare services or serve them very well. Take for instance, let's look at the period of six months after the launch of Mom Connect. We'll be able to know where are most messages that are negative coming from. They might be coming from one particular clinic as against the others. And we'll be able to know that this particular clinic, from this particular clinic we are receiving a lot of negative messages there must be something wrong with the management of that clinic. Let's go and see. It might be that most medics come from one particular district. And we say of all the districts who are receiving very negative messages from this particular district, something must be wrong. Or a whole province. You might find that one province is getting more negative messages than the other eight provinces. Then you know that there's something wrong with that province. And the whole province needs to be looked at, you know. Well, the relationship is that, as you know, Millennium Development Goal, especially Goal 4 and 5. Goal 4 is about reducing child mortality rate, and Goal 5 is about reducing maternal mortality ratio. If you have got the program like this, where you are monitoring pregnant mothers and even newborn children, you are likely to know where the problem lies, and you are likely to achieve this Millennium Development Goals. So that problem of the MDGs is rearing its ugly head again. So it is quite clear that we are not going to reach the, the goals that we have set ourselves as South Africa for the 2015 Millennium Development Goals. And we are not the only ones. I mean, right across the world, I mean, there are many countries that they are not going to achieve these goals. And I would assume that the Mom Connect project gearing itself towards this, there'll be some problems that you want to resolve with this project from the, from, from the demand side, in other words, how you deal with the mothers and, uh, and, and ensure that you can, you can engage the mothers through this project to ensure that you can get better health outcomes uh, at, the, at, the, at the conclusion of their pregnancy. And similarly, there'll be issues on the supply side from, from the point of view of the services that are being provided, mm -hmm. whether it is in the public or the private sector, mm -hmm. certain improvements can be made to ensure that we do achieve you know, some of the objectives mm -hmm. of the development goals, even if we may not have achieved them in 2015. How are you going to achieve this objective? Well, I mean, this is meant to be one of, of the key interventions that we hope mm -hmm. will really move us closer, if, you know, at least a, a bit closer to the goal and the target that, that was set. Mm -hmm. So um, from, from the demand side, mm -hmm. the, the idea is to raise awareness, mm -hmm. We also have, you know, um, we still have challenges in getting moms to go to antenatal, to go and book early, early. during, early the, anti booking, during yeah. the antenatal period. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that leads to, you know, complications later on. Mm -hmm. And the earlier the mom goes to book once they, f they discover that they're pregnant, the better the outcome for both mom and baby. Mm -hmm. the, the earlier complications can be picked up, uh, you know, at this point in time, we're looking at about 50% uh, of, of the causes of maternal mortality is due to HIV. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if mom goes to book early, they get tested for HIV. They can then get um, uh, started on antiretroviral treatment, which then actually will give better outcomes both for mom 
and for the newborn baby. So on the on you know on the demand side, um, that is one of the key aims. E encourage moms to become aware, take responsibility, go to the clinic, and attend regular clinic visits as as they should, and also be aware of some of the uh, you know health risks that might you know be uh, part of their pregnancy journey, if I may call it that. From the supply side, you know, we're meant to uh, provide quality services, improve access and provide quality services. Which is why feedback that the minister was yes, encouraging. Yes, absolutely. Feedback from, from the patients themselves yes. that goes into the system would yes. assist in monitoring the quality of the services that yes. are being provided yes. and the relevance of those services in a particular environment. Let, let, let's get to uh, uh, is it Rachel joining us from, I'm not sure exactly, but Rachel? Morning, Doctor. You're calling us from Johannesburg. Good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Your question, please. I am pregnant and live in Johannesburg, uh, but I have decided to give birth in Limpopo. Mm. Would I have to re-register? Oh, oh, you want to know if you have to, to de-register? Uh, so, so you live in Johannesburg, so obviously if you get onto the Mom Connect, you'll have to be registered in Johannesburg. So you want to know if, if you go and deliver in Limpopo, whether you'll be able to... That's yeah. I'm, I'm sure you get quite a lot of that, and mm. how, how would you respond to this? Well, the, the number that is there can be used by all women all yes. around the country. So once she's regi registered on the system, she's able to receive messages regardless of where she is, and she should be able to send SMSs through if she has any concerns, any, uh, uh, yeah, any concerns, or, or like the minister said, compliments about the services received, questions pertaining to their own pregnancies and, and, and worries about, uh, you know, the, the pregnancy. At but the but obviously, if you, if you live in Johannesburg, you're booked in Johannesburg, the expectation is that you're going to deliver at, yes. at a clinic where you're registered or at a facility associated yes. with that if you do have some complications, touch wood. But then, if you're moving across, obviously you'll go to the clinic and ask for a remove or for a transfer in her case, to Limpopo. You don't have to inform the system by SMS no. that I'm moving. You're already registered. It, it's already there. Yeah, you Because this is a universal yes. system. Yes. Now, but interestingly, before we take another call, yes. now we know that South Africa, well, there are about 50 million or so of us who are registered, at least according to the census. But we do have a significant number, a million or more, of people who are not South African, who are residing in this country. And further, we do have God knows what number of people who are here and they are not here legally. I mean, we see them being sent to Lindela and back to where they come from from time to time. That's a separate matter that a different department is dealing with. But but what about what about people who are not South Africans? Uh, are they allowed to to to, to join in this program, or this is something exclusive for Abantubas and Zanz? No, every pregnant woman who is here has access yeah. to the number. It's not exclusive mm. to South Africans. A cell phone is a cell phone. Mm. If they if they have a cell phone. Mm they're able to use it here, mm. then they should be able to get registered. Mm. And, mm. and um, they're encouraged then mm. to go to the clinic, you know, and, and, and get their antenatal booking. So if you've got somebody who came into South up. Africa via Bait Bridge, uh, the other side swam across and they find themselves here and they're pregnant, they shouldn't be scared that once they get registered here that they might find themselves on the wrong side of the law because once you're pregnant, you owe it to yourself and the unborn baby to ensure that you have a positive yeah. outcome to the pregnancy. From a health services point of view, yeah. we want good outcomes, regardless of where the patient is coming from. They, they still need good quality services. And wherever they find themselves, I would imagine in this country, they should have access to good quality services so that you have uh, good outcomes, both for mom and baby. It benefits everyone okay. if, if, if the outcomes are good. Okay. So uh, th that's why the system is such that yeah. anybody it's can register. It's not there to, yes. to, 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 to create problems no. for people. It's there to deliver. Yes. Matayid, you are joining us from Tembisa. Joining for, thank you for joining Bonita's House Call. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Ramatisel. How are you? I'm good yourself. I'm well, thanks. My question is, what happens if the mother has miscarriage or stillbirth? Would she still receive the messages or does she have an op option to opt out? If, if the mother has what? A, a, a stillbirth? A miscarriage or a stillbirth? I see, yeah. Quite interesting because I would imagine that if, 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 if a mother comes in with expecting everything to go well, uh, we know if these things happen. She might get a miscarriage or, or even a stillbirth or whatever. And the messages will keep coming because 
I guess there's no way of informing yeah. the system that hip hop Hawkeye, the, is not, the messages are no longer relevant to me. Is, is that what will happen or is there no. a different way of dealing with that? No, mm. no. There's an opt out specifically for this. So mm. for moms who have had a negative outcome, mm. they can actually opt out. And there's a number, a a, 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 the same number with, with a different end uh, yeah. uh, digit mm. that allows them to opt out. And the question then will be, mm. you know, what are the reasons for opting out? I see. And, and, and a, a particular so digit indicate, says yeah. the outcome was negative. As, because as, it as helps your statistics says. as well. Yes, absolutely. To know those pregnancies that, 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 yeah. that did not have a positive yeah. outcome. Yeah. yeah. So there is an option to yes, opt out absolutely. somewhere within there. And, and yes. anybody who goes to register is given the understanding of what option to take should, yes. should something like that happen. Yes. Yes. Okay, now clearly a project like this one only succeeds if one manages to garner support of a whole host of partners. Lots of partners indeed. Let's watch. Well, we have got many partners and funders, you know, many development partners. We have got Johnson & Johnson, we have got uh, PEPFA, you have got USAID, you have got DFID, you have got many partners who are helping in this. Even the four cell phone companies are partners because in order to enable these women to be sending the messages, they've given us a 50% discount. Remember, uh, the, 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 the women are going to pay nothing. So it is the state which is paying, but at a very huge discount given by the cell phone companies. So they are also our, our partners in this issue. Well, the rail of the healthcare providers is first of all, they've been dealing with pregnant women. They are just now going to switch over and register them. So the first thing is that the registration will be done by healthcare providers. The second thing is that they will still continue to service the, we the pregnant women as they were doing. But they will now do it with a new awareness that if I do wrong things, this pregnant woman has got the way to report, has got the way to complain. So, so the healthcare providers will be, be very watchful. But when they get feedback, it is their role to change some of the wrong things that would have been picked up uh, through these reports. And the healthcare providers will have to sit down and say, look, we are made to understand that there are many negative messages that come from our facility. There must be something wrong we are doing. Let's try to change. Well, you see, when we launched Mom Connect, uh, VET University did a review of our systems. A and they said there are two main areas of this Mom Connect that will change the lives of pregnant women. The first one is, is what we call on the demand side. That means from the patient side. What mistakes have patients been doing? And we are hoping to correct them with these messages. The second one is on what we call the supply side, meaning the system, the healthcare services, the facility, or even the individual health worker. That is the supply side. It will help us to pick up where the problem lies. Is it the system? Is it the healthcare services as it is? Is it the policies of government? Is it one individual facility? Is it one particular health worker or is it all the health workers? So, so all those will be picked up by Mom Connect, and then it will help us provide better health services when we correct all those problems. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to announce that through PEPFOR, the US government is investing 4.9 billion US dollars towards Mom Connect to ensure a successful <laughs> to ensure a successful nationwide rollout and sustained technical assistance of the project going forward to make certain that this can get up to scale. The US government is committed to seeking out other innovations as well, supporting research, testing goals and methods to helping to develop and utilize new technology to improve the continuum of response to HIV uh, and AIDS. Welcome back. You're watching Politos House Call here on SABC2. And today we are discussing an innovative government managed project that seeks to improve the lives of pregnant mothers and their babies. That was launched recently in Soshanguve in Pretoria. We are now joined by a mother who took a time off to come and explain her role in this initiative. And she also graced the launch of the Mom Connect project where she shared a heart-rending personal experience that we would not like to see being repeated anywhere in the world. Welcome, uh, Tepiso. Tepiso, yeah. Tepiso. Now, I always confuse Tepiso and Tepang. Tepiso. 
Tepi, sir. Makweta. <laughs> yes, sir. In relation to Bra Bobby Makweta, also yes, Angie Makweta. Yes. Huh? We're a small family, so Makweta. Oh, okay. And related. of course, Deputy Minister of uh, uh, <laughs> Correctional Services, uh, uh, Tabang Makweta. All relations. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, Madam, those of us who attended the Mom Connect project had, you know, the stories that you had to relate. But everybody here did not hear those stories. Do you want to give us a little bit of uh, why you are involved in this project? Well, um, five years ago, as of the 2nd of June 2014, I had a fresh stillborn. So when I was observing my child's fifth year anniversary of his death, yeah. um, I'd taken time off. I usually do during that time because uh, anybody who's been through the experience will know that it's a very difficult experience and others is still 20 years down the line and they still experience the hurt that goes along with it. So for me, I was off listening to news because I suppose once a news hound, you always are. But um, I heard a very disturbing story and that was nine children who had died at a hospital in Limbobo, nine newborns. And it, it really, really struck me. It struck a chord with me, eh? Because as I said, it happened on the day that I was celebrating my child's fifth year anniversary of his death. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you had so many at one go at a hospital, I sent the minister an SMS. I said, you know, this is what's happening with me. This mm -hmm. day is significant because I'm going through this. And to hear that there are mothers who are still experiencing that. And, uh, and, and some of these deaths are preventable. I believe such as mine. And I said to him, you know, I've always thought I want to do something, I want to help, but you need to help me. Where can I lend a hand? And he said, Tippi, so first of all, what happened with you? And I explained my experience. And he said, well, I'd love to have you on board, so let me talk to my team. Let's see where we can fit you in. And this is what he did. And Mom Connect was, it, it was very exciting, especially when he explained it to me, what it would involve. And obviously, I have my own experience to share with a lot of mothers out there. It's, it's not an easy experience, but as I said, more importantly, it's the fact that in many cases it is preventable. Now, if you don't mind sharing the story, so now you had what is called a fresh stillbirth. What is your understanding of that? <sighs> it's interesting that you ask what is my understanding of it, because the whole saga, it unfolded in such a manner that I was led to believe at the time that I'm having an emergency C-section mm -hmm. to help prevent my child's death. Mm -hmm. So I went into hospital. I'd had high glucose levels mm -hmm. for, for quite a while. I, one of the first things I asked my gynae to look out for is to check my blood glucose levels because I've, I've had that in the family and I just didn't want to suffer that But fate. before the pregnancy, you're not, you're no, not a I known wasn't, diabetic. I wasn't at So all. you developed diabetes as a result I, of the pregnancy. Gestationally, indeed. Mm. Yeah. So Called gestational diabetes, yes. So mm. when I went in for my last visit to the doctor, because I was due then, mm. I went in on a Thursday. On a Monday, I got a call from his office and they said, please come in. Um, your blood glucose levels are very high, want you to go into the lab and run some tests. I went into the lab and it was interesting because one of the officials there said to me, you know, we, the last time you came here and you did this, it probably would have been at about four or five months. Your levels were at 13, you're at 17. And we find it shocking that you're not on any medication to control this. They gave the results back to the doctor who then called me in and said, we have to book you in, we need to perform or monitor you. That was what I first was first. Yeah. Monitor me. Mm -hmm. And when they put me on the sonar, one of the nurses said, you know, I can't find the baby's blood, I mean, the, the baby's heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And 30 minutes later, another one said, no, it's there, but it's just very faint. And the doctor then came in, gave me some tab, we're going to perform the emergency C-section. But now, this is why I say with the benefit of hindsight, which is always 2020, mm -hmm. My child always used to kick at about two, three in the morning. And I always used to laugh to myself and him because I'd say, hey, you know that I have to be up at four o'clock mm. because I used to work early mornings. So that day, what I had was a very, very weak kick. And I'd told him it, it was so weak that it, it was barely there, but I felt it. Mm. So 
when I asked them, they said, because um, I went to go see him obviously two weeks afterwards for the last final checkup. And I said to him, do you believe that there's something that you could have done differently? And he said, no, I've treated patients with blood glucose levels Ju of 20. Just at that point, just at that point. And, 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 and by the way, I'm very, very sorry that this happened to you, obviously. It happened a long time ago, and I'm even more sorry that I'm, I'm opening up these wounds. But I'm sure you, it's also part of the healing part process. But certainly, a lot of people who are watching today will, ga will gain and learn a lot from this experience. Now, if you look at Mom Connect and have very unfortunate experience, how would Mom Connect have maybe helped in preventing uh, the, the, this kind of very negative eventuality? Well, once again, you know, you, you, we're looking at strengthening the system from both sides. Yeah raising awareness on the one side from the demand side, that is from the patient side, and therefore sending messages that say, ensure that your blood, blood glucose levels have been checked, ensure that your um, uh, uh, blood pressure has been checked, ensure that your HIV status, that you know your HIV status and you're on treatment when you need to be on treatment, and, and prompt moms also to say, go for regular checks, make sure that your baby is kicking as it, as it should be, depending on the stage of the pregnancy. And also giving mom the opportunity to call in if they do have concerns. For instance, baby wasn't kicking like I'm used to, you know, the, the, the strength of the but kick, so should I be late, concerned? I must say, by the time the baby yes. was not kicking properly, clearly in her case, and, and we, are, we, we are not going to be pointing fingers here, but clearly the, when she did the first blood sugar levels, I mean, they were already high and nothing was done about it. And weeks later, it, even yeah. higher, so clearly, the system there should have kicked in yes. and assisted her in yes. managing the blood sugar yes. at that level because she was at that level there are no symptoms that the mother has that will mm. force her to go mm. back to the healthcare system. But somehow along the line, you, you, you need to first educate that if certain things yes. are not done, seek a second mm. opinion or something like mm. that. What I'm trying to say is that once you have all of those results and the tests that are being done, are they fed into the system or you still have to rely solely on the clinic or the obstetrician who's looking after you to deal with some of the issues like this one? No, the important thing is mom needs to be followed up at the clinic, mm. you know, uh, because we don't, we don't want w w what could happen that mom is relying on cell phone messages mm. only. Mom needs to go to the clinic regularly. Mm. The, 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 the supply side of things, which is the other part that, that I was going to uh, complete, is that we need to ensure, you know, that the nurses are, are equipped to manage patients Correct. accordingly, Correct. that there's all the necessary equipment in the clinic, mm -hmm. you know, to do the, the necessary tests, yeah. to allow the nurse to do her job as well as they can, mm -hmm. but to ensure that the nurse herself is, um, has the capabilities to manage, to pick up some of the subtle signs even, and to know when to refer the patient further, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, uh, to, to yeah, at the appropriate time to a, to a consultant, to a specialist, and, and, and to have those levels of referrals working well so that mom is able to be referred to a higher level where they can be managed appropriately. Clearly, but we'll continue our discussion on Mom Connect Project after the break. You stay with us. Welcome back, one is to the house of 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 the house the house of the house of the house of the house of the house to the to of the house of the house of the the house of the house of of the mom connect project and everything that South Africa is doing, and particularly that government is doing, in improving maternal health, that is the health of mothers uh, who have fallen pregnant, and of course the children that they bring to this world. Now, your involvement up to now, other than the, the Mom Connect project, I mean, how, how, what are some of the projects you have been invo involved in, and can you just give us a sense None of what whatsoever. You? This has been my first. I, mean, oh. I actually was very excited about it because I had, as I said at the launch, a moment of clarity on that particular day that I've mm. always wanted to turn my negative experience into something positive. Mm. I just didn't know how to get involved. I see. So when the minister and I started talking about options and, and what I could do, it, it was a perfect fit. Mm. Because one of the things that Dr. Arello was saying that, you know, it, it, it's, it's very important for 
mothers to follow the cell phone messages but to go to doctors. The, the thing is antenatal care is very imperative and people need to know that. I was unfortunately at the discretion of a gynecologist who decided that this is the route that he wanted to take. Mm. So now I have this information that is quite basic that tells me what I should be experiencing, mm. what um, I should be happening, especially in terms of the development of my child at this stage. Mm. But then I can still go to a doctor mm. who will then advise me. And should I not be happy with that, at least I have information at hand to tell me mm. what, what I should expect. And then I can go to somebody mm. else. But more importantly, for me, it's about the person-to-person -person connection. Mm. Given what I do, we often deal with this kind of information at a a huge emotional distance. Mm. So not even long after my child passed, about a month later I went to work, and I still had to deal with this on a daily basis, and I do all the time. But it's always from an emotional distance. So from now, I'm able to talk to mothers who've mm. been through that, or who have fears of that. I got a great deal of support, especially from colleagues, um, family and friends during my time. But each, each experience is different. Yeah. Each experience has its own difficulties. Mm. And emotionally, we're not built the same. We have different ways of dealing. Did you get pregnant again after, after that? Incident? No, I never have. Yeah. And, and people, interestingly enough, would always say to me, well, to deal with it, you need to get pregnant now. It's a very difficult thing. It's a very difficult thing. No, but losing a child is a very difficult thing. And especially mm. if you lose a child just as you're about to give birth. You've been mm. waiting to look at this child. You've yeah. been waiting to, to bond and, and with... And you form a bond to someone Absolutely. because, you know, Absolutely. like you say, you know, he was kicking at a party. You know the gender also. You, you, you prepare know, a they name. They actually have you, you have a baby shower. I mean, you've got all of these things that, that prepare you. And suddenly when the outcome is not what you expect, it's quite, mm. it's quite, it's quite mm. a big deal. It's quite a big they, deal. They actually have mm. personalities at that mm. stage. So you, yeah. you already have a sense of mm. the kind of baby that you're going to have. But more importantly for me, it's about the support, whether it's community-based, mm. whether it's the health system itself. Mm. Because I don't necessarily think that the health system failed me. Mm. But I do believe that there was a failure somewhere along the line. And I, I, I was advised that I had grounds to take legal action. And I just didn't want to go through that. For me, what was important to heal emotionally, but yeah. I just think more importantly, the support. There are mothers out there who don't have support. We have teenagers who are going through a very difficult yeah. time. Who don't even know pregnant. what is happening to exactly. their bodies. Exactly, unwittingly. Mm. And, and the fact that they will have the support, mm. I think for me that's great. That's what I'm excited about. Exciting, exciting. Now, <coughs> the minister said at the launch, and many other platforms, that research has shown repeatedly that the, some of the biggest problems on the mother's side uh, that lead to negative pregnancy outcomes. There are three H's, HIV, hypertension in pregnancy, and hemorrhage. Now, Sepiso did not have that problem. She had a different problem altogether, which was diabetes and, and everything else. And, you know, we've had, we've discussed gestational diabetes or diabetes during pregnancy on this show on several occasions, and I'm sure it's a subject that we'll need to revisit in, in, in its various forms. But in terms of these three things, that we're talking about. You've already said around the HIV, what it is that Mom Connect will attempt to do to deal with that. The other two H's, how are you going to deal with them? In the same way. Mm. The mom needs to go for the antenatal clinic visits. Uh, we empower women by getting them to, to be aware that they need to have their, hyper their, their blood pressure checked, to have their blood sugar levels checked when they go for their clinic visits to therefore if they have any other health concerns go back to the clinic and mom connect is really meant from the demand side to empower women because a woman who's knowledgeable and empowered is able to actually seek services and they're able to actually make demands to say look i'm here i i, I noticed that you haven't checked my blood pressure the message said that i need to have it checked could you please check my blood pressure and ensure that my blood pressure levels are as, as they should be. And, and, and that's really the intention, to empower women to, 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 to seek services, to know also when they go to the clinic what it is that they need to be seeking in terms of the services that are being provided and the extras that, that need to be provided, rather than just showing up at the clinic and hoping that things get done, but to also be knowledgeable about what should be done and what, what they have access to when they go to a clinic. Now, a person like Sepiso, who, who, who was privately managed, and I see Mom Connect because it is launched by government, run by government, would obviously benefit from something like Mom Connect. She has said that herself. Now, how do you ensure that people who are, 
who, who attend antenatal care in the private sector can also benefit from all the good things that we're talking about insofar as mom honors is concerned. Well, I think the plan going forward is to bring, you know, your general practitioners into the fold mm -hmm. so that they also are part of the bigger system because, you know, the health system as it is, it's, mean, it's meant to the be all encompassing. Says he's not the yeah, minister of the public no, sector, yeah, he's the yes, minister of it's, health. Yeah, it's, 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 it's meant to be all encompassing. Yeah. So it's meant to, uh, when we say, you know, um, strengthening the system on the supply side, yeah. it's not just in the public sector, so, so it's it meant to be in the, the private in the sector, the sector as well. But then I'm going to, I, so shiny sons are getting better, and I'm going to ask you to make a lot of people who are in the middle of the world, and I'm going to ask you to make a lot of people who are in the middle of the world, and I'm going to ask you to make a lot of people in the shiny sons are getting better. We'll run up our discussion with Dr. Pedro Holland, the Chief Director of Maternal and Women's Health, the National Department of Health, and the Tepi Somakweta, when we return. Watching Politics on Sound here on SABC2 and welcome back. Some Mushudella Rana, we are Gamakoro, as soon as Dr. Honel, what is your key message? We just have half a minute left for you to speak to the nation. The key message is as soon as a, a woman, f you know, suspects that they may be pregnant, please go to the clinic, get a pregnancy test done, get the pregnancy confirmed, and therefore start antenatal clinic visits. Mm -hmm. and then as part of that, in, 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 in that first visit, get registered on Mom Connect so that they can get messages sent through that will raise their awareness and educate them on what to expect during their pregnancy and beyond. And after giving birth, you follow, you follow them up for how long? For a year. For a year. Yes, okay. because we meant to encourage you know, good nutrition, mm. uh, breastfeeding, especially exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months okay. of, of the baby's yeah. life for baby to go for their regular immun the, the scheduled immunizations mm. and, and a reminder for mom that baby must and go the for their to immunizations. And all of those Yes, things. absolutely. Yeah. So I leave you for last, my dear. What is your key message? With less than 500 days before the MDG, goal, MDG goals four and five, the mm. countdown phase, I think it's very important to have a project like this because one of the greatest legacies of South Africa is the inequality, the disparity socioeconomically between the people. And it doesn't matter what, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're educated or not, we all need guidance and help. But most importantly, especially people who are not educated, mm -hmm. especially people who are poor, because those are the ones who are most affected when it comes to maternal, newborn, and child deaths. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that we need to reach out to, and those are the people who should hopefully benefit most from this project. Mm -hmm. But even those people who are enlightened, it is quite clear from your experience also that Absolutely. you can I'm never get enough example. information. I'm a perfect example. Mm. And not because I didn't read, not because I didn't eat healthily, not because of any of those things. I did everything right, but it still happened to me. Mm. So I think we need to be aware that anything can happen at any time. We have a system now in place that can help us. And, and that's what excites me. That oh, we can give to so the have-nots what the haves have. Good freedom. Dr. Hodder, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Um, all the best at the time when you decide to give it another attempt. All, all, all the best. <laughs> we'll take that experience of yours and ensure that it can reach all South Africans, the healthcare system and the users of the healthcare system, as well as the policy makers. Thank you ever so much, you beautiful ladies. We we'll hope to see you again into the future. One is Ronaldo Timanga Dawai City Public. Rosanzo Holekani, the Tatina Kajan. Itre, Monato Hopotelika Kubo, Isidu Kuku. We'll be back next Saturday with the ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So don't miss it here on SABC2 at 8.30 in the morning. Thanks for joining us today. And for me, Dr. Victor Ramuretsi Ramatesela. You take care.